All right, all right, folks. Let's take a look at those markets. Bitcoin still hanging out at 26,500. You know, overall, Bitcoin's not doing too bad. You know, a lot of the altcoins are pretty much where they were. I mean, BNB is actually up. You know, BNB was like 220 last week. Um, XRP almost back up to 50 cents. Cardano still about 26 cents. Kind of where we were last week. There's not too much craziness happening right now. On um, stock market close today. A few things I want to talk about. And um, all right, let's see what's going on. Yeah, I was listening to Rand this morning, uh, Crypto Banter. He's become extremely bearish on altcoins. And to me, this is a good market indicator. I've been saying this for a while. You can just look at the history. Every time this guy gets bullish, the market dumps. Every time he gets bearish, the market pumps. He cannot call bottoms. He cannot call tops. Biggest Luna pumper, biggest UST pumper, biggest Solana pumper. Um, every scam in the book that's gone to zero, he's been basically a part of it. I mean, you can watch his channel. The guy has no gauge in the market. So now because of the SEC FUD, he just seems like he's overall bearish on altcoins when the guy's been telling you to buy altcoins for the last two years. Now all of a sudden we're dumping hard and he's kind of like, oh, well, altcoins could dump, you know, um, the SEC FUD. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like this guy just has no gauge on the market at this point. Yeah, altcoins could dump a lot farther, but who cares? We got the happening in less than a year. So that's, and he's also trying to blame everything on the SEC. Well, I'll play the video. Bitcoin is now only $500 away from where it was when the attack came. But if you look at the altcoin market, the altcoin market is absolutely wrecked. So if you look at the banter bubbles and you set yourself a monthly view on the banter bubbles, what you can see is that the altcoins are absolutely, absolutely wrecked. If you look at, you know, you look at the, the Richard Hart coins, Pulse, Hex, um, Pulse, X, all those guys, those are all down 76%, 65%, 47%. But then you look at all the other coins. So you look at Matic, Matic down 30%, Algorand down 30%. I'm going to sum it up for you. Big cap altcoins are down between 20 and 30%. That's normal. Bitcoin was at $30,000. Now it's down to $26,000. So Bitcoin's down what, like 15%, 20%, and your altcoins, your good altcoins, not your shitty, scammy altcoins that we knew could go to zero and we knew could pump and dump. You know, he keeps talking about Hex. Hex pumps and dumps 80, 90% every few months. Look at what Hex did the last bear market. It went down 99%. Then it went up thousands of percent. This is all par for the course. But every big cap altcoin, you know, Litecoin, Theta, Cardano, they're all down the same. Matic, it doesn't, ha it doesn't even matter if they were named in the SEC lawsuit. Um, most of them are down about... 25, 30%, and then the lower cap ones are down about 40%, folks. That's what the altcoins do. It sucks. VeChain wasn't named as a security. It's down 23%. It's, it's all the same. This is what happens with altcoins. Bitcoin went from 20, like I said, 29,000 to 26,000. Okay, so the altcoins dropped 30%. That makes sense. That's what they do. Apecoin down 40%, um, Solana down 22.63%, Cardano down 28%. What do these tokens have in common? Well, these are the ones that the SEC actually said, well, these are securities. Yeah, those three or four, but what about all the other altcoins? There's thousands of altcoins and they're all down 50%, 40%. See folks, this is what I don't like. When people try to find a reason, oh, this coin's down because of SEC, okay. But what about the thousand other altcoins that are down? 40, 50%. Theta was never named as part of the, as part of the, as part of a security with the SEC. It's down 25%. Hex was never named. It's down 80%. So there's always a reason and people try to justify those reasons in their head of why to get out of altcoins. Yeah. If we could go back in a time machine, what I'd say, oh my God, I'm not going to buy any altcoins till now because they're down so low. Yeah. But you don't know when the bottom's going to be. Like I said, my next buy level for a lot of these altcoins is for, like I said, Cardano under 20 cents. If they drop another 10, 15%, I'll buy another stack. But you can't be surprised if Cardano goes from 45 cents down to 25 cents when Bitcoin goes from 30,000 to 25,000. Par for the course. Par for the course. So I think Rand's off base on this. I think we're going to have a volatile year with altcoins. Cardano could go down to 10 cents for all I know. 
But I do think Cardano is going to be $5, $10, $15 in 2024. And all these other altcoins, even Matic, all these are going to, be, are going to make all-time highs. All right, let's see what else is going on. Litecoin price prediction. As Litecoin shoots up 8% from $70 level, can Litecoin reach $1,000 in 2023? That's what I've been talking about. That's why Litecoin is now one of my biggest bags. It can never be labeled a security. And I do think the high for Litecoin is going to be between $700 and a thousand dollars um well not in 2023 but in 2024 so the one thing you gotta like about litecoin is it goes under the radar the sec is never going to talk about it Rand nooner is never going to talk about it you don't have to worry about him shilling it scammers aren't going to talk about it it just does its thing behind the scenes and it pumps like a mother during the bull market so I do think it's possible. I think at the end of this year, uh, Litecoin could be three, four hundred dollars. I mean, I'm not going to put any money on it, but I do think going into that bull run, Litecoin's going to outperform. Um, not just because it's not labeled a security, just because it's a good project and it has a use case and people use it as a currency and it's available essentially on every single exchange. If you can buy bike, if you can buy Bitcoin, you can buy Litecoin. All right. Why is Cardano price down today? You know, I see a lot of articles about that. Blue, boo, boo. Cardano price is down today. Continuous decline for a fourth week in a row amid rate hikes, fear, SEC crackdown, blah, 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 blah. Okay. The price of Cardano is down to 26 cents, down 3%, blah, 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 down uh, over 30% in the past two weeks, as is every single altcoin. All right. Bitcoin cash is down 25%. Litecoin is down 20%. Everything's down. So you could make the argument, though, the the the, um, the SEC um, coins are down more, but I don't know because there's a lot of coins that the SEC didn't even mention, and they're down 40 50%. So, folks, typical bear market moves. I saw it before. I saw my Cardano go from $0.02 cents to $0.08, cents, and then right back down to $0.02 cents in, uh, in 2020 or 2019 or whatever it was. I've seen this all before. Expect a volatility. This is the depths of the bear market, the end of the bear market when the last flush happens and all that dumb retail money, the last little bit of retail money that was holding on get flushed away. I've seen it a million times and I'm not going to let that be me. Could be wrong, but that's what I think is happening. A judge signs off on Binance deal to move all U.S. customer funds, wallet keys back on shore in lieu of restraining order. As you guys know, SEC won at Binance.us frozen. All the assets frozen, everything basically destroyed. Judge said, no, 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 that's ridiculous. But we are going to make sure you're keeping all private keys on shore back in the USA. Judge essentially said, you need to come up with a deal. Good news for Binance.us. If you're still using Binance.us, I don't believe you can um, fund your uh, Binance.us with US, uh, US dollars anymore. But the exchange is still good to go in the United States. Um, it looks like the, the uh, court systems are actually on Binance's side, not on the SEC side. So for now, you can use Binance.us to, um, to make trades. I wouldn't be keeping any money on Binance.us, but I wouldn't have a problem using it just to make some quick trades. So that's the Binance um, news. I want to go over this story just to let people know, you know, it's a big world out there. I know a lot of Americans get kind of caught up in um, everything revolves around America. You know, I'm fortunate when I was younger, I did a lot of traveling. I've been all over the world. I've been to China. I've been everywhere. Europe, I have Greek family in Greece, London, spent time in London. Um, where, I've been everywhere. I mean, you named the continent, Mexico. I mean, I've been all over. So once you've been all over the world, which... I have. And every time I go to these other countries, I always want to go back to the United States. As beautiful as they are, I love my United States. I love how at midnight, if I'm hungry, I can go to McDonald's and get a burger. I mean, I'm spoiled. You know, I love how if I want to get something done, it's easy. They have court systems. Um, you know, I've always told the story, Greece is beautiful, but my father was Greek. He left me some property. It took years to get the property transferred in my name. Um, and the Greek government was just completely scammy and sleazy. It's like, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how they operate in parts of Europe. And it's worse than other places. But my point is, people need to realize that it's a big world out there. Whatever the SEC wants to do short term, it don't matter. Here's a story. Asia offers hope to Solana Cardano amidst SEC scrutiny. 
Solana Cardano faced the SEC scrutiny, but a glimmer of hope emerges from Asia, offering regulatory respite and sparkling, renewing optimism for both assets. <clears throat> Solana and Cardano have found themselves entangled in the scrutiny of the U.S. Securities Exchange Commission, yet a glimmer of hope emerges from the recent development in Asia, potentially offering respite, that's a weird word, respite, to the asset and their holders. While the regulatory situation in the U.S. remains uncertain and unclear, the, new, the news from Asia brings a breeze of fresh air. As you guys know, Asia is now embracing crypto, that includes Cardano, Litecoin, Theta, all your favorite altcoins. It don't matter what happens in the U.S. Yes, short-term pain, but we it's a whole big world out there, folks. And you also have to realize the government is not supporting the SEC. For one, we're probably going to have a Republican coming in two years, whether it's Trump, DeSantis, or RFK Jr., who is actually a Democrat who supports crypto. In fact, I might actually vote for RFK Jr., and I'm more of a Republican. So... It's not going to be Biden. The guys, there's no way. So whoever comes in, Gary Gensler's gone, and I think the tides are going to turn for crypto, and I think that's going to be a big catalyst for these altcoins like Cardano. But even if that takes a few years, even if it doesn't happen, you're still going to see a lot of volume coming in from Asia, and um, it just looks good, folks. Um, there was another story I also saw where they're looking for, I think I've covered this story Friday, where they're trying to do an ETF in the United States through BlackRock. Crypto is not going anywhere. I know it. I'm. It is boring now. I'm bored. I had to like force myself to make a video today. I'm just like whatever. But it is what it is. This is when all the weak hands are going to get completely flushed out. We had we Cardano had a low of twenty four cents, and now we had another low of twenty four cents. We had a re we had a retest, and things are shady right now. I agree. Your favorite altcoin could drop another 20 or 30%. And if that happens, unfortunately, most people are going to capitulate and they're going to get completely out of their altcoin and then they're going to have to buy in higher. But that's crypto. I'm here to warn you guys not to make that mistake. I could be wrong. This is investing. It could all go to zero. I've had stocks go to zero, um, you know, penny stocks. And I've been in cryptos before they go to zero. But I'm not afraid of a coin like Hex dropping 80% because I, I just think it's going to come right back. If it's a scam coin, you don't want to be in it. If it's a confirmed scam, yeah, then it can go to zero. But a lot of these coins I've been talking about that we've all that we're all in, they're extremely volatile. Look, if a coin can drop 80%, it can pump 80%. Coins just don't go up. If you have the ability to pump 500%, 1000%, you also have the ability to dump that too. But we want that ability. It's a two-way street. You can't go to the guy and say, "I'm looking for a project that only pumps." It don't work that way. You have to take the good with the bad. And unfortunately, a lot of people actually see it as bad, but it's not bad because if you're buying these altcoins right now, you're going to do extremely, extremely well in 2024, 2025. But a lot of people just aren't going to do it. I know it. I talk to people. Nobody talks to me about crypto anymore. Um, some of the smartest people I know, people who have higher degrees and all that, they only talk about crypto when it's pumping. I always told the story of my cousins and everybody calling me when Bitcoin was at all-time highs and I'm out drinking with my friend. They're asking me how they can buy it. And I told myself during that time, I will never be like that because that is not the smart money. We want to be smart money here. We want to be buying now. Even though interest is low, now's the time. Cardano under 30 cents. Even Bitcoin under 30,000 um, is the time to be buying. All right, folks, that's it. Like and subscribe. Talk to you later.